Hey, kitties! I got one more from the old 50 movie horror pack for you, and this one is one of my favorites. At least of the horror movies that are in the public domain. It's not necessarily good, but it's not too terrible. Let's put it this way, it's no Beast of Yucca Flats. It stars Boris Karloff and Jack Nicholson. And there's a bit of a backstory behind it, so without further ado, let's take a look. In the 1930s, Boris Karloff was the king of horror, the Frankenstein monster himself. In the 1940s, he was a recurring star for Val Luton's psychological thrillers. But by the 1960s, he was nearing the end of his career. Between hosting television shows like Thriller and appearing in Roger Corman's Edgar Allan Poe movies with Vincent Price, he appeared in this little oddball alongside a young Jack Nicholson. But trust me, this is as far from The Shining or Frankenstein as either one of these guys could possibly get. Nicholson plays Andre, a soldier in Napoleon's... Uh, uh, okay, wait a minute. What's with all this crystal clear HD garbage? If you're watching the terror, you want it to look like shit. That's more like it. Nicholson plays Andre Duvalier, a soldier in Napoleon's army who becomes obsessed with a mysterious woman before becoming entangled in the life of the Baron von Lepp, played by Boris Karloff. By the way, I don't care what kind of actor he grew into, there isn't a chance in hell you can convince me Jack Nicholson is supposed to be French in this movie. Permit me to introduce myself, Lieutenant Andre Duvalier, fifth chasseur. There's also a strange witch and more conspiracies and plot twists than you can fit into a gothic cemetery. What has the Baron done to you? He killed my son, Eric. Eric was your son? Yes. And tonight the Baron pays for Eric's life with his own immortal soul. Don't you see now it was all a lie? The Baron did return that night to find Eric with the Baroness and he did kill her. But there was a struggle, and in the fight, it was not Eric who died, but the Baron. I killed the Baron. Then Eric is still alive? He took the Baron's place, and for 20 years, no one has known. But he took the Baron's place in mind, as well as body. In his mind, he is the Baron Von Lett. You really have to see it for yourself. This film is a mess. I've seen it more times than I can count, and I still have trouble keeping the plot straight. Fresh off The Raven, director Roger Corman paid Karloff, who had a supporting role in that film, to stay on for three days. Wanting to take advantage of sets left from other movies before they were torn down, Corman's idea was to shoot Karloff scenes and make up the rest later. It may seem insane, but this is the same guy who shot entire movies in two days, so you can kind of see where he was coming from. Roger Corman was the king of B-movies. He never even paid to do copyright searches for the titles of his films. He also discovered more mainstream talent than any other filmmaker. Sylvester Stallone, Jack Nicholson, even Francis Ford Coppola got their starts with Corman. Actually, Coppola was one of the miserable protégés tasked with completing this garbage once Corman moved on to other projects. I bet he really appreciated that. Finally, it's also worth noting that the film features a young Dick Miller. He was another Corman regular, but would go on to gain a cult following in the 1980s with films like Terminator and Gremlins. Like most bad movies, the terror has an unusual aura. No matter what time of day you watch it, it could be noon, on a Saturday, surrounded by friends, with sunlight streaming through the windows, and somehow, it would still feel like you're watching it alone in the dark at 3 in the fucking morning on a Sunday. It's bad, but only because it's disjointed and uneven. Although most prints today are muddy and cropped, you can still tell that from a practical standpoint, it is a competent, even atmospheric production. Besides, who doesn't love listening to Boris Karloff? God knows I have enough upon my conscience without the senseless murder of a young man who never harmed me. So what is my final verdict on the terror? Well, I like it, and not in some weird, ironic kind of way. I constantly find myself being drawn to it, whether it's because of the strange backstory, the train wreck that was the result, or the fact that maybe, secretly, deep down, it's actually a good movie. I don't know. The fact is, there's good and there's bad in every movie. And even if the terror is labeled as trash, I'm proud to admit, I love it. So give it a watch if you want something different. You can check it out for free on YouTube, and it's legal. Until next time, take care. See ya! Permit me to introduce myself, Lieutenant Andre Duvalier, 5th Chasseur.